Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of Reacting Reddit, where real people re-react and summarize content on Reddit. Today I'm going to be talking about video games, because something amazing has happened. I don't know if you know much about games, but usually video games made about movies and crap like that are bad, right? But there's an exception, and, and that exception is the Star Wars video games. For some reason, Star Wars games have been great. There's just been a lot of them. There have been, like, loads of them. We're talking about more than 20 different Star Wars games over, like, 40, 50 years. And a lot of them are really, really, really liked. And they were made by a wide variety of different people and publishers. And that's an important part. Probably the most important part. The reason that Star Wars games actually tend to be good games. The exception to that rule is Battlefield. <laughs> but that being said, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing because Disney has also stated that, okay, EA lost exclusivity and then Disney was like, look, we need other people to publish Star Wars games because we are bad at it. They admitted that. They were like, look, we know that we don't know how to properly self-publish video games. It doesn't work well for us. We're not good at it. It's better when we work with other developers and shit. So, oh, that is awesome. Really exciting. On another news, um, there's an open world Star Wars game that's being developed. So that's pretty awesome. People like open world games and people like Star Wars and there hasn't been an open world Star Wars game like ever. They're all very linear games. You could kind of argue that the Battlefront games, because Star Wars Battlefront, the old ones that came out not recently that EA had nothing to do with, <laughs> those ones were really good. Um, and I think, so I think those were Battlefront, right? Because it's Battle, not to be confused with Battlefield, but it was basically the same as Battlefield, except it was Star Wars and... Oh man, one of the best things about that game, for me at least, was you could you could strap these like bombs to the front of speeders, and then you could just destroy stuff by speeding right at it and jumping off at the last minute, and then blowing your speeder up as it ran into. Oh, it was so fun! It was awesome. I think that was in the first game because they actually it didn't work in the second the same way. Like they they changed it. You could also use those timed bombs the same way with ships. Oh, I loved that. It was so fun. But there, there's tons of classic Star Wars games. There, there's Doom-like Star Wars games. Like, you've probably heard of Doom, right? One of the first shooters defined what shooters became like, basically. Before 3D, when they would use illusions in 2D to make it look like it was trick your brain into thinking it was 3D, right? That era, even that era, had really good Star Wars games. They're Star Wars games for, like, all genres. Basically, except open world RPG. <laughs> you have tons of shooters, Star Wars style, people love. Um, there's also some, like, more puzzle style st Star Wars games. There's more RPGs. There's MMOs. There's an MMO. I guess not MMOs. There's a lot. Uh, a lot of great Star Wars stuff. So this is a good sign, actually. It's it's something away from the, the AAA Monopoly style and more towards an open style of sharing and development. And that's beautiful. It's really, truly wonderful. So this this post was originally by Precoy Mad. Let's see what people have to say about it. Could we get a remastered version of Republic Commander now? I'd settle for a direct sequel. Sev has been a prisoner of war for like two decades at this point. <laughs> Another person says, no, I need a sequel. Pours one out for Sev. We didn't even get a resolution in the novels. Yeah, people really like Sev. Sev is one of the characters in Re the game Republic Commando. And Republic Commando is a first person shooter game. But the people tend to like it because you it's not you're just not alone you're always with a squad and there's a lot of controls and things you can make your squad do and the whole game is basically about that and it's a shooter and it was done like very well it was balanced quite well it was good a good game people really really enjoy it and so all these people are t talking about republic commando republic commando pvp shooter a la Rainbow Six Siege, VR-capable AAA pod racer, 
Shadows of the Empire 2. There's a lot of intellectual property that has tons of potential. I need Republic Commando 2. Imperial Commando, it was supposed to be called. <laughs> See, they, they love it. Everyone loves Republic Commando. This person says, I felt a great disturbance in the Force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in happiness and were suddenly relieved. <laughs> Yes, isn't it right? It's good news. That's so lovely. It's so rare for good news. I think that it would make an e turbance then. Huh. Only one word for that result on DDG. <laughs> it's going to Ubisoft, specifically the studio that made the Division games. I can't wait to go to a place on the map and do some sort of force puzzle to unlock icons on the map. <laughs> oh... So, okay, this person is talking about the fact that Ubisoft is related. They're the people who are making the open world Star Wars game. And yeah, I, I will say that I don't personally, I'm not that excited about Ubisoft making an open world Star Wars game. Because basically, open world is just a fad now. And a lot of games that make themselves open world just do it for that sake of it. And um, it's easy to make a very open world now that is boring and dull because we're kind of spoiled by open worlds. We have some really incredible games you're competing with and Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out soon. Like games like The Witcher, hell, even games like GTA, like geez, <laughs> GTA is absolutely ludicrous. It's not an RPG, right? But I guess you, it has RPG elements, because you have stats and you develop them and you're playing a character, right? So maybe, <laughs> that's funny, I was just like, there's no magic! It's not an RPG, but it can be an RPG without magic, you know? In my head it's like, well, it's either magic or sci-fi, and it's neither, so... Uh -huh. But it is an RPG. Moving on. More Knight to the Old Republic. Now, please. I need it. Give it to me. Oh, Knight to the Old Republic is probably... One of the most liked Star Wars video games that's ever been made. Um, Star Knights of the Old Republic is an RPG series. There's two of them. There's Knights of the Old Republic 1 and Knights of the Old Republic 2. Not to be confused with The Old Republic, which is the Star Wars MMO, right? And not to be confused with the other Star Wars MMO that existed in a different point, right? There's a lot of... There's a lot of history going on. <laughs> but people love Knights of the Old Republic. Um, why, why do people like it so much? There, there were a lot of decisions. It was a lot about, like, Mass Effect, actually. Like, if you've ever played Mass Effect and it's an RPG, you're developing your skill, there's combat and stuff, but you're also, like, making choices that affect things in the future, right? And that, that's part of Knights of the Old Republic as well. And at the time, you didn't have as much choice in games. So that was, that was cool. People liked that. And it was also just a fun game. Um, it was fun to like slowly build up to getting a lightsaber and doing that kind of stuff. And the storyline was cool. It was interesting. Um, they, they were just really solid games. And that, that was one, one kind of recurring theme in a lot of Star Wars video games is that they, they target... They don't can really rely on the fact that they're a Star Wars game. Does that make sense? Like, they're great games, even, and they just, yeah, they're Star Wars, and that makes them even better, because everyone likes lightsabers and lasers and stuff, and the Force is cool, and dark side and good side, and fighting and evil and good and whatever, and the battle and conflict. It's cool. It's interesting, right? And Jedi are cool. Um... And I love how the Star Wars universe shows, like, the Jedi, and they all judge everything, and then they grow corrupt and fall apart and fail. <laughs> like, it's so... I love that. It's so, it's so fascinating. So I agree with this guy. Definitely more Knights of the Old Republic. <laughs> Someone else says, the worst part of this is that EA owned the developer for that and did nothing for the past eight years. I'd settle for a remaster of the original games or something. If they don't want to go through all the effort of making a good Knights of the Old Republic 3. <laughs> I hope Disney got what they wanted out of the deal, because I certainly didn't. Disney has been downright weird about game licensing for decades. They seem to want not to be bothered by it. 
That said, the mobile Star Wars game was rolling out in truckloads of money on a shoestring budget at one point. I imagine the EA partnership was significantly profitable, despite lots of mediocre games and plenty of bad ones. My hope is that they finally wised up about games being a pillar of entertainment, and they're going to start putting more thought and effort behind getting the intellectual property it deserves. The treatment it deserves. I'm, I'm for Disney being like, hey, we can't do this, but we're going to work with people who can. That's cool. Because EA is just, like, they, they did a lot of them. And, and there actually were a lot of good games. EA, like, now is more, more financially motivated. I guess it was always financially motivated, but, like, EA, there were a lot of really great games EA has made. And I would argue there were more of them the further back you go, but, you know, to each his own. A reply says, the deal was extended for far too many years. EA published some real dog sh games too, but Fallen Order was amazing. One good game in over a decade. You can't forget, EA actually released a virtual reality element with the Battlefront series, one of very few AAA spec developers willing to do so. I appreciate that at least. Disney originally gave EA the exclusive rights because they didn't want to take the risk with other less profitable companies. Sure, EA Star Wars games have sold below expectations, but because they are EA games, they sold millions. All Disney had to do is sit back and let the money flow in. They didn't, but they did get their $4 billion back from the new movies. Hopefully now they can afford to be a bit more, uh, experimental. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yes, now if only they could lose the exclusive rights to the NFL too. <laughs> and FIFA, give it up to EA. Let someone else please make a decent game instead of that crap. I'd cry a little tear of joy. We haven't had a decent football game since 2005. 2K5. A whole generation of gamers now don't even know. EA sucks so hard for doing that. I want an actual competitor to Madden. I want improvements to franchise stuff for offline players. I'm not going to use the mutt stuff or whatever. Haha! <laughs> Alright everybody. That's it for now. If you want to make videos just like this, please reach out to us. We are looking to get in touch with other content creators. You can get our email by going to our About channel on this YouTube channel, doing the Picacha code, clicking Business Inquiry, sending an email saying, Hello, we want to talk to you on Zoom. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!